afternoon Dwayne Dry Creek Wrangler uh, want to talk to you this afternoon about how do you get your horse to do something that your horse doesn't want to do uh, been uh, on the tractor all uh, all day it's haying season out here and so I've been uh, I've actually running the rake um, and uh, but there was some things come up with the boss and so we got off a little early so i thought well we better make a video while we have the chance and uh, so poured me a cup of coffee fired up a good cigar this is oliva v uh liga especial now these are not particularly expensive cigars but they're very good for you my cigar buddies out there uh you want something a little bit more than your java lattes you're you're like fluffy stuff but you're not quite ready for a a, a partagas black label or a christoph vengeance these are very good you ought to give them a try so how do you get your horse to do something your horse doesn't want to do now what we're not going to do here is we're not going to say push this button pull this lever ding this bell presto vesto the horse is going to do something so one of the biggest weaknesses and problems in the horse world today is so many horse trainers, that's the approach they take. They teach a method instead of teaching a philosophy or a principle. And we're going to deal with a principle today. And if you take the principle and you understand the principle, then you can bend the circumstances to fit your situation, but the principle will always hold true. Okay, um, so here's the principle: nag your nag. A nag is is a an old time colloquial uh, reference to a horse. Okay, somebody go saddle my old nag. All right, but nag also you know what nag means. Uh, it also means to keep asking. Now, <clears throat> being married for thirty years, I'm not a proponent of a nagging spouse. Nobody likes a nagging wife or a nagging husband, all right? Uh, but this is this is the principle. This is how it works. Now, my wife, uh, mama, is, she's a little woman. She's not a big woman, okay? So she is, she's not a domineering, aggressive, take charge kind of person. Now she can be, um, she can be fiery when, when she's fired up, but not in a domineering kind of way. And like I said, she's not big. And anything that I don't want to do physically, she cannot physically make me do it. Okay? So now, we, um, we live here in the house, and there's always chores that need to be done around the house. Honeydews. And you come in from work, and you're tired, and you've been going for several days, but there's things that have to be done. Now, usually, okay, it's not a problem, but there's just certain things that I hate doing. I hate doing. I hate plumbing. I hate plumbing with a purple passion. I'd rather take a whooping than crawl under a sink and do plumbing. Um, but... My wife will come to me and she'll say, uh, honey, the kitchen sink has got a, a leak underneath it. And I'll say, okay, I need to get to that. And I'll get to that. Well, you know good and well I didn't get to it. And so she'll come to me later, not later that evening. We've been married for 30 years and she's wise. Okay, but she'll come to me a few days later and she'll say, honey, that leak's getting worse under the sink. I've had to pull everything out, and I've got towels down there catching it. Okay, all right. I need to get to that. I need to fix that. Well, I didn't get to it, and I didn't get it fixed. Um, And uh, don't you point your finger at me. You're a husband, too. You know what I'm talking about, all right? So she'll come to me down the road, and and uh, maybe she'll cook a extra special meal. And she'll bring me a glass of sweet tea and she'll sit down and she'll look at me and she'll say, honey, yes, I really need that sink fixed. Please 
eyes and she'll bat those green eyes at me and eventually I'll get down and I may grumble and I may fuss and I may complain but I'll crawl under that stupid sink and I'll fix it she cannot come to me and walk up behind me and grab me by the ear and twist it and drag me into the kitchen put me down on my knees in front of that sink and physically make me fix that sink no more than you can grab your horse by its lower lip and drag it into a horse trailer if it don't want to go the principle's the same if you want to be wiser and better as a horseman and instead of finding a way to beat and whip and pull and come along or worse yes i'm going to say worse bribe with feed and cajole your horse into a horse trailer then or to cross water if it doesn't want to cross water, then learn this principle to keep asking. Because a horse is just like a person. A horse is going to get tired of you asking. And if you ask the right way, with the right timing, your horse will eventually do what you want it to do just to get you to stop asking. You should try it sometime. It's amazing. Um, and if you ask the right way, and the horse does... Okay, here's, so a horse weighs in the balance. Okay, I have to choose between one or two. I have to choose to get in that horse trailer. Now that horse trailer is kind of dark and it's kind of small. And I'm a, a prey animal. My eyes are on the side of the head. I depend on two things. I depend on my vision to be able to see anything sneaking up on me. And I depend on my feet being able to kick or to run away in case of danger. If I go in that horse trailer, I don't have either one. So I'm not quite figured out yet that that's safe. So I either have to choose that or I have to choose to get this person to stop asking. Now, at first, they're going to choose. I'm not going in the trailer no matter how much they ask. But if you ask the right way and you patiently keep asking, this is going to become more of an issue. And this is going to become less. The secret to successfully nagging your horse is to know when to stop nagging. So whether let's, let's just use, so we're consistent, let's just use going in the horse trailer. You lead your horse up the horse trailer and you energy, just smooching. Maybe you've got like a plastic bag on the end of a, of a, uh, a little uh, flag some energy we're, we're not beating and whipping the horse the horse already says i think this might be a bad situation you start whipping on your horse and yours says, yep i was right this is a bad situation it's just energy we're just asking okay will you go in the horse trailer no i'm not going in the horse trailer will you go in the horse trailer nope i'm not going to do it go in the horse trailer no i'm not going to do it you just keep asking now, if they come to the point where they're like, they put their nose down to smell the horse trailer, stop asking. If they put their foot up on, they put that one foot up there, stop asking. Give them a minute to realize that, hey, if I make an effort to just think about this, to even think about thinking about this, they stop asking. So listening to what they're asking is a reward in and of itself. And me putting my foot on top of that horse trailer floor Nothing bad happened. Nothing bad happened, but something good happened. They stopped asking. And they'll work this out. And so you just keep asking. All right? Um, become a more patient, wiser, gentler horse person. Now, you got to be consistent. And once you start, you're committed. Don't start this when you, you're scheduled and all your friends are meeting at the trailhead at 1 o'clock. And so it's a 15-minute drive there. And so at 12.30, you go catch your horse knowing your horse is not going to, what's going to happen. You're going to get impatient and you're going you're gonna to hit the accelerator and you're going to up the ante. And you're going to up the energy and you're going to get uh, frustrated and you're going to get angry. And your horse is going to say, see, I knew this was, this was a bad deal. It's the principle. Now, you 
watch these big time horse trainers and they're right. They say the way you get a horse in a horse trailer is this and then so we go here and we squeeze them against a the wall and we make them go around and we do all of that is right but you can't always do all of that but you what you can do is you can watch that and you can understand that the base principle no matter what particular little bit of buttons these guys push they all use the same base principle and that base principle is what they ask the horse and they know when to stop asking and then start asking again. And the horse eventually does what they want them to do in order to get them to stop asking. You know, it's biblical. If you look up the story in the Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus told the story of the unjust judge. It says this judge, he, he did not regard man and he did not fear God. And a widow came to him and uh, she went to the judge. She said, hey, avenge me my adversaries. He didn't care anything about her and what she wanted. She asked him again. She went back and she went back and finally got to the point. He said, you know what? Although I regard not man and I fear not God, I'm going to do what this woman wants just so she'll shut up and leave me alone and stop asking. That principle will work with your horse if you apply it properly. Okay? So there's very little in life that we can't fix if we learn the proper principles and apply the principles. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you. See, hopefully that'll, that'll help you a little bit. Just get the old wheels turning and maybe shift your focus in the way you look at things a little bit. All right. Um, and uh, so um, I just want to leave you with that. Now, I've had a tremendous number of questions lately about doing a video on turning stirrup leathers. So my next practical video when I come in and I've got time and and I can actually we can physically do something I'll do a video here very shortly on how to turn your stirrup leathers on your saddle so your stirrups are facing the right direction and it's not breaking your ankles every time you ride okay so be on the lookout for that that one's coming up soon I hope this helps you if it does click like leave a comment leave a question uh, share it with somebody if you know somebody it might help subscribe if you haven't uh, if you subscribe, hit that bell and, and uh, be logical, be reasonable, be safe, and have fun. The only way you can be a better horseman is to be a wiser horseman. Not no more buttons to push, but be wiser. We'll catch you next time.